Uh, yeah. So, this is a thing. Hello there, and welcome back to Rowcraft. This is it, my friends. The final episode of Season 4. Episode 19, I believe. Today's episode is going to focus pretty heavily on Project Zero Zero. But, as always, we will have some fireworks for the closing ceremonies. So buckle up while I condense the work of months down to 10 to 15 minutes. So here I am just starting on Project Zero Zero. It's called that because the very center of the project is at coordinates zero zero. That X made out of stone marks the center of the project. Now, as you can see, Zero Zero is out in the middle of the ocean with nothing else around, which really gives me a lot of free reign to do anything I want. And what I want is to try and make another large flower garden art piece thing. I did the first flower garden back in Season 2. I had plans to do another in Season 3, but then my brain took over and said, Nope, you're making that wandering trader island project I did. Click on the links if you haven't seen those videos yet. They're worth watching if I do say so myself. Which I do. So anyway, I wanted to do another large flower garden project. Last time I did this, I used the natural rise and fall of the landscape to add a third dimension to the flower garden so that the rolling hills would add to the effect of the rolling hills in the picture. This time, there are no hills. There's no anything. Last time it was a landscape scene, so this time I wanted to play with angles and perspective a little. This build would be a lot more regimented, using flat surfaces and angular shapes to try and create some sort of 3D perspective when viewed from above. Like the original garden, the goal was to allow the garden to be enjoyed in three different ways. What you see up close and personal would be very different from what you see when viewing it from above, which would also be very different from what you see when viewed on the world map. Now to be clear, I'm referring to Zero's world map. Click on the link if you want to try it out. And not in-game Minecraft mapping. Sadly, those maps don't show flowers on them, so all the fields of flowers just look like green grass on a Minecraft map. The world map mod, however, converts all the pixels that make up an individual flower into one color to create a different color from what you see in person. So, there are some pretty big goals I'm hoping to achieve here. But at the end of the video, you'll be the judge of whether I achieved them or not. What you're looking at here is me testing out the basic structure of the garden. The wooden path is how visitors will explore the garden when it's finished, but these middle sections over here that are just lines at the moment, well, to be honest, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them at this point. The only thing I do know is I want the grassy areas to slowly descend into the ocean, so I'm going to work on that first, copying and mirroring this basic design around the rest of the garden. Hopefully, by the time I finish draining all that ocean and laying out the foundation, I will have a better idea what to do with the middle sections. Now, considering how much time this is going to take, I am going to have to fake my way through a time lapse using a series of screenshots to show the progress. Roll that wonderful screenshot footage!
And so this is what all that work looks like in person. You can see from the middle sections of the walls at the center of the build just how much of the ocean had to be drained away. If I never see a sponge again, it will be too soon. Now I'm really happy with how this is going so far, and, and I say so far because even the sections that look complete aren't even close. And I still haven't figured out what I want to do with the middle sections. I, I've, I've had so many ideas along the way, like instead of these being walking paths like the diagonal paths are, maybe, maybe these could be water paths and could be traveled by boat. I've tried out some ideas in creative, but not only is crunch time approaching fast, crunch time being the end of the season, none of the ideas work. Flowing water is a huge pain to control and keep away from the areas you don't want them flowing into and still look interesting. So I think it's time for me to bite the bullet and abandon water pathways and see what I can come up with on the fly. Who knew I'd end up making it up as I went along? So, after much trial and error, I finally came up with something that would work for the middle sections. Part of the plan with them being waterways was that you could look down and see a coral reef under the water. I even thought about replacing the dirt with glass and not drain the water in those areas so they would be very large aquariums. But what broke that idea for me is that left them as big blue streaks on the world map. So what I'm going to do is bend the wooden pathways that surround the garden and have them run down the middle with coral flowers in the center. This will add a ton of vibrant color to the garden and help break up each section of flowers. And through the magic of editing, I have finished the middle sections and finally drained all the water from the project. One side note. I do love how you can see the curvature of the paths from here. That's exactly what I wanted. Anyway, beyond the middle sections, there's the plan for the area at the center, which I hadn't fully figured out, but with all the ideas that I was trying out for the middle sections, I think I stumbled into a good idea for the centerpiece. But before we get to that, I have to break up all these straight lines in the grass sections. Now, I could leave it the way it is, and with time so close to running out, I'm tempted, but if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. No half measures. So the idea for the grass sections is that the entire garden will end up being one large stained glass artwork, or at least that's the hope. I found this image online, and I like the general shape of it all but I've been tweaking the image as needed to work with the color palette I have available in Minecraft. So, without further running on at the mouth about everything I've done here, let's run another time lapse and show you what I did from the perspective of the world map. And here I stand, high atop my little scaffolding perch, to take the first look at the garden with all the flowers finally planted. You may notice here, or from the time lapse, I replaced whole sections of grass with pods all and mud blocks. The reason for this is I started realizing after I planted flowers in the first section that the view from up here was mainly green. The grass and the flowers were blending together into one big sea of green. But with the use of some darker soil, and, and I was glad to learn you could plant flowers on mud, I didn't know that, we can get some darker patches in the garden that not only break up the sea of green effect, but the darker patches help to force that 3D perspective that I was hoping to achieve. If you look at it from up here, it really looks like the garden is going deep into the ground, but in reality, the center of the garden is only 11 blocks lower than the outer ring of the garden. 
I don't know about you, but I think this is looking pretty cool. But wait, there's more! I still have to build a centerpiece and then actually make this place look like something people come to visit. The first step for the centerpiece is to connect all the wooden pathways with a log path. This is partially to enforce that the walking paths are made of wood, but to make the center ring darker than the paths connecting to it for some more contrast. Then, in the absolute center, I'm going to build a fountain of stone brick. Now, my footage is really sketchy at this point, as I was in full build mode. What with this happening during the last week of the season, I still had a lot to get done and I kept forgetting to turn the camera on. <sighs> my initial idea was to build some sort of statue as a centerpiece, but after playing around with blocks of coral, I had the idea to build a centerpiece out of coral. If you didn't know, in order to use coral and not have it turn gray on you, it must be in contact with water. This added some difficulties, but that's why the build is inside a dirt water tank. I could have probably figured out a way to do this with flowing water, but what I ended up doing was filling the tank with water, placing the coral, and then placing leaves behind the coral since they now hold water. This made it easier to control for the final part of the project that I was determined to squeeze in. That project was that whatever I went with as the centerpiece would look solid from the outside but would actually be hollow. Why did it need to be hollow? Because of the caves and cliffs achievement. In 1.19, they added an achievement for free falling from all the way up at build height and landing on the bedrock all the way down at egg 61. And not dying. The not dying is kind of important. So, I wanted us all to gather on the final day and attempt to get the achievement as part of this garden build. Seeing as I had a slime farm and chests upon chests of slime just sitting around, I decided to coat the walls with slime for those who like to get a really good bounce. I mean, who doesn't love a good bounce? Am I right? My hope was that I could put slime blocks down at the bottom and still get the achievement, but no such luck. Apparently, you actually have to land on the bedrock. The way you survive is to have flowing water down at the bottom, or you can try an MLG it if you're daring, but considering the first three test runs didn't trigger it and then the fourth one killed me, more on that in a second, I think we'll just go with the flowing water. And there we go. It works. Sadly, or if you're like me, hilariously, Zero Zero actually has a block of bedrock that is one block too high to get the achievement. But all the blocks around it work just fine. Now, I could log in as CEO and break that block so it makes it easy for everyone to get the Caves and Cliffs achievement, but honestly, I think an endless series of death messages is the perfect way to celebrate as people jump down and land on the wrong block. But maybe that's just me. <laughs> and now as the sun is setting, all that's left to do is tour the flower garden and see it in its final form. I personally prefer seeing it at night. I love how it turned out, but with the night sky as a backdrop, everything stands out so much better. Now, it goes without saying that I ran out of time to implement all my ideas, but I think what I was able to build contains the essence of what I was going for. You know, what's missing is really just the frills. There, there was going to be an outer wall with lots of archways, and then over the northeast, southwest cardinal directions, there would be some glass oval artwork, like the east would be a sun rising, and the west would be a sun setting, and you know, I have all this stuff pictured in my head, but... Whatever, I didn't get to it. There's no point focusing on what I didn't get to. It's time to focus on what is. As I said earlier, I, I used coral flowers on the middle sections to add some vibrant colors to the whole garden. You can do this by placing them on waterlogged slabs so they don't die. Each middle section uses a different combination of flowers so that even though the whole garden is a series of copied and mirrored sections, each section still stands out from the rest and has its own unique qualities. 
I used frog lights below the leaves to light the whole garden and prevent spawns, but I thought the pathways really needed these lamp posts to add some detail to make it feel like people actually visit this park. The banners are a nice little detail that I think really added something that I was missing. I, the garden would be fine without the lamp posts or banners, but with them, it just has that lived-in quality. I know that's not really the term I'm searching for, but I think you can see what I mean. Now on the actual flower sections, I, I tried to use every colorful plant that would add a unique color to the world map, not just flowers. One thing I think I would have done differently was, if I had known about the mud blocks earlier on and, and that you could plant flowers on them, the grass would have been much less prevalent. The darker blocks really make the flowers stand out, which is, it, it's the whole point. All of this is meant to highlight the flowers. At the end of the day, all the lofty goals of I want this to happen or that to happen, really it's about having a large-scale flower garden and using them to try and draw something that you can't see up close. And views like this are why I did it. I mean, there are a lot of Minecrafters out there who do phenomenal builds, building, building things I would never even imagine attempting. But this, this is something Gregor built. And, and I think it's fair to say it isn't something you see every day. I'm really happy with how this turned out, especially considering that the only real planning was there will be a lot of flowers, and I sort of want it to look like a stained glass window when done. But even if you don't have a world map to see the stained glass effect, you still have this. And down at the center of the garden is the coral block build, displaying the big, bold, beautiful RC for Roadcraft. The idea here was that a large coral stock grew up out of the ocean to show off the logo, but to also support the observation deck on top. The platform allowing visitors to take in the garden from a distance without having to fly around. The bubble vaders at the corners take you up to the observation deck from down here at ground level. Granted, it's not the most ideal situation to have to jump on top of the azalea bushes to get to the elevators, but the bushes really needed to be there to further bring home the idea that you're, you're at a public park. And these little park benches with the trapdoor arches are another one of those little details that adds so much to the feel that people actually visit the garden. The coral here at the front are meant to look like the gray, dust-covered ferns you sometimes see in gardens. I could have placed them on waterlogged slabs, but gray is, after all, another color to add to the palette. But enough about the center of the garden. Let's take a ride up to the observation deck and take a look around. Let me jump up on the glass railing here to get a good look. Remember, kids, don't do this at home. Glass railings are for your protection. Now, this is part of what I meant by the garden can be enjoyed three different ways. We were just looking at it from the up-close-and-personal viewpoint, but here we can stand back at a distance to get a completely different experience. And it was this view that really hammered home that I needed to change out all those grass blocks to break up that sea of green. This looks so much better with the mud and pods all sections breaking everything up. And something I hadn't touched on before was the wooden pathways all use different combinations of wood to try and give the illusion of lighting to help push that 3D effect I was going for from the map view. Speaking of the map view, let's take one final look at the world map and see the final product at night. One thing some of you may have found curious was why there were so many sections of green and yellow throughout the garden. There aren't that many green and yellow flowers. Well, you have to remember that the colors you see here are an amalgamation of all the pixels that make up the flower. So every flower has a bit of green in it, and then you mix in the colors of the flower itself, and you get these colors. If the flower has more green in it than anything else, that's why you'll get green. If it has more yellow, then that's why you get the yellow. Let's go back to the close-up view and see which flowers produce which colors. So if you look at the mini-map on the left, you'll see that I'm in the middle of the screen there. And I'm now standing in the middle of the blue orchids. And here are the nether plants, but they're all the light blue. The cornflower is the darkest blue. Oxide daisies are sort of a bright yellow. The dandelions are yellow, obviously. The poppies are red. 
But here we are, the tulips, the white tulip is the lightest of the greens. And then the pink tulip is this slightly pinker version of it. Up north, we have even the orange tulip. And then the red tulip is this dark green. It's because there's so much green in the tulip. Obviously, the allium is the magenta color, or light purple, or whatever you want to call that. Allium bluets are this light green. And the lily of the valley is yet another green, because there's just so much green in that plant. And I suppose I probably should apologize a little. I mean, um, I, I know I'm going on and on, and if you're still here listening, well, well, bless you. Uh, sometimes I start rambling, and it's, it's hard to rein it back in. So enough of the explainy stuff about flowers. Let's finish off the garden by taking a ride up to the Leap of Faith platform. Well, it, uh, it sure is up there, isn't it? Yep. Anytime now. Anytime. Ah, there we go. I had to make the platform out of clear glass, uh, otherwise it, it would have appeared on the world map as a weird blob at the center. I love that this platform is so far up that every part of the world is out of render distance. Geronimo! Okay, just off to the side here. Well, that was fitting. <laughs> Oh, good lord. Well, anyway, uh... Yeah, like I, like, I, like I was saying earlier, um... If you don't get off to the side in time, you, you hit that center block and you die, which is... Which is the funny part. Ah, oh, well. And so here, um... Oh, boy, I hate to have to do this, uh... The reason this episode took so long to put together is uh, I realized too late that I was having some recording issues on the day, a couple of connection issues. Uh, this it's, it's, it's really sucks. Uh, I, I have to apologize, especially to the other rogue crafters out there, um, because I have nothing to show for the last day. I, I've been trying to figure out a way to make use of the bad footage I have and use audio Stormy had from a Twitch stream and... And I, I just have to give up. Um, I couldn't figure out how to make use of it. And if you, but if you want to see the closing ceremonies, you, you can catch them on Stormy's Twitch stream or, or for Ferocious Seahorses, for that matter. Uh, links are below. And again, I, I'm sorry. You know, this is this this is the first time I haven't been able to show the fireworks at the end of a season, which it, it's it's a downer. Uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, this is where the fireworks took place, and as CEO, I swarmed the place with phantoms because, you know, what's a fireworks show without phantoms? Um, that's why all the phantoms are here, but uh, on, on that sad note, is this video is already running along, and, and I've been rambling, and uh, now, I have, now I have to do the tag. Um, yeah, I have, I've been Gregor, and this has been Roguecraft, uh... Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, always, always try and find a way to have some fun. Uh, see you in season five. <laughs>